Today, 43 drivers are lined up directly behind pole sitter Bobby Hamilton Jr. and rookie Kyle Busch. Now, Jeff Burton, Jamie McMurray, Michael Waltrip, and Matt Kenseth had an impressive list of next Tell Cup stars in today's race. Now, here's the command for today's race. And now, race fans, please welcome back our Grand Marshal, Gregory Yusko, for those three most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines. The engines have fired and all of us at NBC have been waiting for this moment. It's time to go racing and it's my pleasure to send it upstairs to the three guys that share the driver's seat. Yeah, it's a little crowded sometimes, but it makes it more fun that way. Alan Bestwick, Wally Dahlenbach, and Benny Parsons. Anytime you're in a passenger seat when Benny's driving, it's exciting, I can assure you of that. It's been a trend in the NASCAR Busch Series this season that's very different from last season. Last year when Bobby Hamilton Jr. won here in Chicago, it was the first time all year long that a Bush Series regular won in a race where there were cup drivers. Been the opposite this year, BP. 18 races, 5 cup winners, 13 Bush Series winners. How about today? And a next Hell Cup driver hasn't won since Texas. Yes, I think these Bush regulars can take the guys today. You know, we talk about Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Busch. These guys have won seven times. Now, if we include Greg Biffle, you're right. He, we're, we're going to count him a Busch regular because he has run every race. But for these 14 next Hell Cup drivers, Wally, it might be more running the race than trying to win today. Yeah, these Cup guys are they're out to have fun, and they want to win, but they also want to edge on the competition tomorrow. So what they learn on the track today, they'll try to apply to their Cup cars tomorrow. So I think they'll give them a little bit of an advantage. Maybe we can get a finish this week like they had last week down in Daytona. Guys being moved out of the way on the last lap. The guy that's sixth at the white flag wins the race. You never know. 300 miles to find out. NASCAR's back on NBC. Glad to be with you from Chicagoland Speedway. When we come back, the green flag in today's NASCAR Busch Series 300 miler. Bobby Hamilton Jr. is on pole position. Last year's race winner dominated here a year ago, led 186 of 200 laps, and there are all those Nextel Cup guys surrounding him in those first rows of the grid. Nemechek, Kenseth, Harvick, Kyle Busch up there on the outside, though, one of the Busch Series regulars. And now we see Casey Kane, who's been so hot in Nextel Cup this year in row four. Greg Biffle, three victories. Todd Zegedy, his second Busch Series start, last year's modified champion. David Green will have to drop to the back end of the field. His team had to make an unscheduled engine change this morning. That's a violation of NASCAR's one engine per weekend rule. Mark Truex Jr., championship leader for Chance 2 Motorsports, the team owned by Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Teresa Earnhardt. And ever see Jason Leffer on the outside of row 10. A lot of guys say this is the car to beat today. Johnny Sauter, 27 car, also got to go to the back of the field for uh, an engine change. Ron Hornaday in the two was a uh, winner at Milwaukee two races ago. He's going to come from inside of row 15. Justin Labonte, Terry Sun in row 17. And Mike Wallace, the Daytona winner, going to come from row 18. Now we see the remainder, rows 19 through 21. Tina Gordon will start 42nd, and Steve Grissom, previous NASCAR Bush Series champion, will start 43rd. Big crowd of cars here to try and get into this race. 50 drivers tried to make the 43-car field. And Wally, the first test of my math this year, that means that there'll be like seven of them that had to go home. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. And you are right. Wow, very good. And you see the drivers who have to go to the back all because of engine changes. Matt Yoakum. Alan Kevin Harvick starts in the fifth position. This will be his second Bush Series star here in Chicago. He has two cup wins, could have had a third, had he not run out of gas with two laps to go last year. His crew chief for today, Ricky Byers, expects fuel mileage to play a factor at some point. They chose a gear selection that should help with fuel mileage. But Harvick still told me he feels like not only does he have a top five car, but a car that can give the 25 a run for his money. To Dave. Matt, Greg Biffle is 327 points out of the Bush Series championship chase right now, but his team still believes that they can win the championship. Talking to crew chief Todd Parrott this weekend, Todd told me, you know what? We only have to win seven out of the next 17 races and an average at least a fourth in the other 10, and we can still win this thing. We are not out of it. To Marty. 
Well, Dave, last year in this race, Matt Kenseth finished second to Bobby Hamilton Jr. He said the only thing he needed to catch him was a rocket booster. Unfortunately, there is no rocket booster on the 17 car today, but the good news is he has the car that won at Texas. Also, yesterday in happy hour, the final practice, they ran 25 laps. Matt said, park it. I don't know what you can do to make it any better. The longer they run, the better they get. He said as long as Hamilton Jr. doesn't jump out in front of us at a big lead, we will catch him in the long run. And that could be a problem. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what Bobby Hamilton Jr. exactly going to do. If you're a racing fan, a big racing fan, and you watched this race last year, they're predicting more of the same for the 25 car. But again, I think a lot of cars are better this time than they were last year. That's why we run the race. You've got to find out. A lot and of things can happen. And he's got to run 300 miles, and that is the first problem. Mile and a half track here at Chicagoland Speedway, so it'll be 200 laps to make up the 300-mile distance. A little bit better than $1.3 million on the line, and you see just a beautiful day. Heavy, heavy rainstorm last night. The fans had to work their way into some kind of soggy parking lots to get here today, but a good crowd has turned out, and they were about to see the 19th race of 34 in the 2004 NASCAR Busch Series campaign. Hamilton Jr. and Kyle Busch on the front row. The pace car is off, the fans are on their feet, and NASCAR on NBC 2004 is back under green. Guys had a little trouble getting up to speed there. Look at Kyle Busch hanging on the outside of Hamilton Jr. He wants to race him for that lead on this first lap. That is a tremendous battle side by side, but Kyle now wisely backs off and goes in on the inside, gets that preferred line on the inside. Kenza still on the outside, seems to be running pretty well. This racetrack in the past has been known for that outside lane being a little bit slippery in the first Whoa, part of the game. here we go. Ooh. And Good. Harvick in the 21 car wisely backed up and let those oh, two there cars... there we go. One in trouble. Turn one. Caution's out. It is Billy, Billy Parker. Parker in Rusty Wallace's 66. Caution flag is out. Field immediately slows. And just a lap and a quarter before trouble for the Denver North Carolina driver Billy Parker in his 11th NASCAR Busch Series start. He's kind of struggled here lately. This will be his uh, fourth crash in the last five races. He is a rookie in the Busch Series and he's trying to get the feel of uh, what is a totally new type of racing to him and it's been a little bit difficult in recent months. It is very difficult. This is a brother of Hank Parker Jr. And he's been around racing for a long, long time. But you're right. It's trying to get started in this business. is so tough. I talked with Barry Dotson, the general manager of that team, this morning. It's hard to tell exactly what happened watching the replay, but a couple of cars right behind him. I don't know if the contact was made or just simply pulled up behind him and got yeah. him a little bit loose, arrow loose. And, he, and these cars are going to be probably a little bit loose at the beginning of this race. These cars normally want to go to the tight side, so you got to start loose. Hey, guys, you're changing. You're working on the wrong side. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to put fuel in that car. Looks like the... Maybe they can. If they remove that piece. Yeah, if they just take the quarter panel off, but that, what, that's what holds the fuel filler. Got another look at it here. That's just from Kenny Wallace's car. Yep, he got a little bit loose getting into the corner. Exactly what happened. Got the car sideways and he got in that gray stuff. And that would see why Kyle Busch wisely backed off going in turn three and went to the inside. And I said that outside lane can be a little slippery early in these races. It caught up to Billy Parker there. Caution early in the Twister 300 for the NASCAR Busch Series at Chicagoland Speedway. Bobby Hamilton Jr. leads. Kyle Busch is second. Joe Nemechek third. Matt Kenseth fourth. And Kevin Harvick fifth, followed by Greg Biffle, Casey Kane, Robbie Gordon, J.J. Yaley, and David Stremme. Stremme got a good jump. At the red car on the outside lane. Oh, look at him go three, four wide oh, down the corner. But why is it they fill it oh, two? Oh, there's a little contact. Who was that? Yep, Biffle got knocked up the racetrack a little bit. Robbie Gordon, 60. Robbie Gordon, the 55, right behind Biffle. <laughs> Now watch it all accordion when they get on the brakes for turn three. Wow, Robbie got a little bit loose. Up on the outside there. Hey, hey, hey. look at this. Kyle Busch, the five, into the lead by Bobby Hamilton Jr. That's not something a lot of folks thought they'd see today here. 
Somebody passing that 25 car. And one guy in particular, I think Bobby Hamilton Jr. didn't think it was going to happen. Still early. Still early, but I, I would think you want that clean air. I don't think he wanted to give that spot up if he didn't have to. So now Joe Nemechek in the 87, chasing Hamilton Jr. for second, and that's Matt Kenseth in the yellow car. Back in fourth place. Now all chasing 19-year-old Kyle Busch, younger brother of Kurt Busch, the Nextel Cup Series star, having a spectacular rookie season, already three wins just past the midway point of the year. In Casey Kane, the 38 car, moving up high on the racetrack. I don't, and he goes by the 21 car on the outside. And look at the... Wow. 20, 25's got a problem. Something's wrong Jr. with the 25. He's on pit road. Hamilton Jr. off the pace. I think maybe the left rear tire's flat. Dave? He said it woke up. Then he said, I'm changing boxes. He's trying to change ignition boxes. That's the electronics on the car that has not helped. It has died on Bobby Hamilton Jr. And he's oh, bringing it in. Man, yeah, he, man. See some smoke coming out I of the inside I talked to the team there. just before this, guys, and it's so ironic. Ed Renzi, one of the team owners, told me, you know the racing gods. He said it is so hard for the motor, the carburetor, the ignition box, and even the circumstances on the track to work right to win these races. So we by no means think we've won this thing before we took the green flag. Well, they're a lap down now as the field comes by, and there's enough smoke from out of that 25 car as it sits in its pit box that... Um, he could be there for a while. So one favorite out of the way. Mm. It's a cool business. Kyle was talking about racing for second, so not anymore. Ron Hornaday in the two, Jamie McMurray in the one, and Tim Fito on the 12. And this is going to be back for 17th, 18th, and 19th spots. Hornaday moving up to 17th. And another update on Bobby Hamilton Jr., Dave. They're pushing the car away, Alan. It is not good news. The crew said, hole in the bottom, hole in the bottom. The motor is blown. Oh, wow. Yikes. Broke something internally in the engine, enough to put a hole in the oil pan. That's something that's not repairable. Michael Walter, the 99 car, going by on the outside. If anyone runs this outside line and makes it work today, it will be Michael Walter. Michael started in 27th position. He's trying to take 19th away from Tim Fidewa. And Michael earning his reputation as being one of the early explorers in these races of that high lane. That blue and white car, if you regular watcher of NASCAR Bush Series competition, that's Jason Leffler. Normally red and white this weekend, special paint job. Keller, BP. Keller. I want to say. It's okay. Okay, thank you. We'll, Jason Keller, we'll work with if you. If you're a regular, you would have known that. <laughs> I would have known that, that's right. <laughs> Little branding thing from his sponsor there, new product they're rolling out, so that's why the different colors. Keller is um, in 21st position in joining that race for a spot. He started 23rd, so a little slow progress there, though this Chicago track's been a good one for Keller. He's got all top 10 finishes here. Michael Waltrip. Going to try and rim right around Jamie McMurray in the one. 18th place at stake here. And I'm surprised, I mean, Michael's, I'm surprised nobody's jumped up there. After seeing Michael, normally it's monkey see, monkey do on these deals, so everybody starts moving up if they see somebody that's got an advantage, but pretty much everybody's staying on the bottom. And that seven is Todd Zegedy, the Featherlight Modified series, last, series winner last year. Michael Walter just blows by him. Michael up to 17th and counting. Billy Parker's been on and off pit road a couple of times. He has rejoined the race. Coasting down pit road is the 33 of Cliff Boyer. And he looks like he may be headed to the garage to join Bobby Hamilton Jr., who's with Dave Burns now. And Bobby has climbed out of the car. Bobby, you didn't even hardly have time to break a sweat, bud. No, we, uh, same thing happened to us in Kentucky and, uh, Daytona, I think it was in practice, uh, out the bottom of, I think, a rod or something. But uh, what do you do? <laughs> I mean, you, can, you, you pretty much count championship pretty much out the window now. So all thing we can do is just try to go win races. And, you know, we're kind of stuck in a box. There's, you only got two people build real great Ford engines. That's Roush and uh, Yates. So we're kind of stuck whatever that's the good times with the bad. I just wish we could get a little bit of good times with this deal. Reference fact to the guys, uh, guys to the fact that this team operates pretty much by itself. 
Hamilton Jr.'s second engine failure of the year. He dominated a race at Kentucky Speedway in June and fell out late with engine failure when a potential victory was in sight. But they're not building their own engines. Right, they're coming they're from a vendor is what right. I was referring to. Yeah. Yeah, Robert Yates builds the engines in the 25 car. It's not the Yates Roush combination, but just Robert Yates in his engine shop builds the engines for this car and several others. But a little side by side here at 19th and 20th place. Fido by Segedy. The blue and white car, the 50s, Reagan Smith. About to lose a spot to Jason Keller. There you go. Still there, yep. clear, clear. You'll be catching at 66, slow and low. Segedy. He wants to get down. He didn't like it up there. Zagadi comes from Richfield, Connecticut. Zagadi comes from Richfield, Connecticut. He's used to driving cars that are about a, almost a thousand pounds lighter than these cars and with almost twice as much tires. So coming out here at these super speedways, it's an adjustment for him, but he's doing a good job so far. That is Kyle Busch, took the lead from Bobby Hamilton Jr. at lap number six and is now out in front by 1.6 seconds over Joni Macek. Kyle Busch is the leader. As uh, we reach the lap 23 mark, and uh -oh. off the pace is Kevin Harvick in the 21. He was running seventh. And this is something very unusual for a Richard Childress car to have any kind of problems. Matt, what's going on with Harvick? Benny, Kevin came on the radio telling his crew chief, Ricky Viers, the guys are on the wall, he says, I have no oil pressure. That is not good news. No, no that's no. pretty much it. I'm not going to fix that quick. So scratch another potential contender today out of the equation. Harvick, winner of two of the three Nextel Cup Series races that have been held here at Chicago in the past. If they start scrambling around, it might be something as the belt coming off. But normally the engine locks up before you discover that the belt is off. This race for fourth place. Casey Kane in the 38, Greg Biffle in the 60. Biffle's been working him over pretty hard trying to take it away. Trying to take the air away. Off this real spoiler. <laughs> but he hasn't been able to manage to do it. And ahead of this, by the way, uh, Matt Kenseth has gotten around Joe Nemechek to take second spot. So it's Kyle Busch, Kenseth, Nemechek. And then the uh, race you're looking at here between Kane and Biffle. How about more on Kevin Harvick, Matt? Al Andrioli, the engine tuner, has Kevin trying to crank the car, turning it over. He did say the light came on. He looked down, had no oil pressure. It was still running at that point. It will now fire now. His chances for victory, gone. So Biffle takes that spot away. Biffle in the 60 takes a spot away from the Casey Kane 38. Greg Biffle running both the full NASCAR Nextel Cup Series and the full NASCAR Bush Series schedules in 2004. That means sometimes on the same weekend, he's at two different tracks that are hundreds of miles apart. And I talked with him yesterday about how the double trouble is going. Really uh, kind of an off weekend for me here in Chicago. I get to run both of them at the same place. So uh, I like it. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. The Bush car, you know, gives me some confidence to, to, for the next Cup car. And, um, you know, it uh, gives you a little extra track time. It's kind of nice. And, and that's what we talked about. I mean, these guys, they're, they're trying to get as much track time as possible, but just a little bit of an edge. Even if it's just a little bit for tomorrow, uh, these guys are learning something. On the move, Michael Waltrip in the 99. Going by Truex Jr., the NASCAR Busch Series points leader. That's a battle for 12. And with Kyle Busch leading and maybe leading the most laps today, we could possibly see a change. And Michael did that on the bottom. Passed him on the inside. Now watch, now watch Truex follow the veteran and move up and see if that high line that Michael Waltrip is using will work for him. Michael Waltrip started in 27th position, then he told you he just took 12th away. Martin Truex Jr., Mayetta, New Jersey, son of a, NAS of a modified racer around uh, New Jersey and a former NASCAR Busch North Series racer. And what a job this kid has done in his first full season of uh, NASCAR Busch Series racing. I tell you, those guys over at DEI, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, just marvel how well he's able to relate to the crew and tell them what he needs to make this car better. But I'm loving the way he's following Michael Waltrip and 
trying to learn how to run that high line around these racetracks. And he's staying with them now. Yeah, he is. While they race, Kevin Harvick is climbing out of his car and Matt's with him. They are still trying to diagnose the engine problem on Kevin Harvick's Chevrolet. Kevin not racing for the championship, the car owner's championship, though. How disappointing this problem so early on. Well, we, we had a good car. Uh, we got off there a little bit at the beginning, and I changed my line and picked up, you know, quite a bit and thought we were coming back. And uh, it's just disappointing for all the recent guys that work hard. We just lost oil pressure and don't know why. There's about seven or eight different engine guys from the RCR engine department looking at this race car because, remember, they do have the two car in this field chasing the drivers and car owners championship, guys. Looks like Mark may be... Uh making a run on Michael. I think he learned, learned a something. great deal yeah. following Michael Walter for just a few laps. Nice move up through the standings there for Michael you saw a minute ago, Marty. He should be pretty happy with his race so far. And it's been a great race so far for Michael Walter, who has had nothing on the radio. He's trying that high line, also works on the bottom line. Bad news for the rest of the field. His fastest lap in the final practice yesterday was his fourth to last lap. Longer they run, better this car gets. So that he, we haven't seen how good it can be yet, I don't think. Yeah, Marty, I'll tell you what, just thinking about what Benny and Wally said a minute ago, Truex was passed by Michael Walter, moved up and followed him in that high line, and now he's hanging right with him, and even looking like he's faster than Michael. Look at this. Look how much, how much oh, faster. Oh, that's pretty high there. <laughs> oh, look out. Michael says, hey, how could he be up there? I'm high on the racetrack. Yeah. He's going by me on the outside. Go ahead. You can have it. And for third place, Greg Biffle is on the move. 60 cars by Joe Nemechek in the 87. Now we'll see if uh, Truex will drive away from the 99 of Michael Walter. That's some smoke out of that 60 car. I think I'm seeing things. And here's Casey Kane in the 38 moving up to challenge Nemechek also. And he'll take the spot away from Nemechek. So Joe falling back. About halfway through a fuel run as we work under the green flag with Kyle Busch out in front by almost two seconds over Matt Kenseth. Just past 50 miles of today's NASCAR Busch Series 300 miler at the Chicagoland Speedway, Joliet, Illinois. Beautiful day, mid-70s, and Kyle Busch having a beautiful day, too. He's out front, and cruising away, although Matt Kenseth is starting to reel him in very quickly. Very quickly. Wow, he gained a lot there through turn one and two. That's like a two-second lead that's gone in about two laps. And right now, the 17 is about a half-second a lap faster than the five. We see just blows by Something Kyle. wrong Bush. with Kyle? Oh, here he comes on pit road. The five is on right pit road. Right side. He thinks he's maybe right a front. Right Look at the right front. front. Yeah. Yep. Tires and fuel, guys. Four tires and fuel. So at lap 40, about 20 laps shy of when he would expect to come to pit road, another leader wow. runs into trouble. And this is one of the contenders for the NASCAR Busch Series Championship, and he's heading down at 45 miles an hour. The pit road speed limit, Dave Burns is there to cover. Kyle Busch didn't know if he had a problem or not. He felt like there might be something wrong on the right side, so he said right side tires, guys. So he didn't know if he had a flat going down. The car was starting to drift on him going into turns one and two. That was a handling issue they were going to fix on their first pit stop. Kyle felt this other problem, figured I'd better get on pit road right now. Yeah, they, they're pretty sure that thing's flat, Dave, the yeah, right front tire. It was flat, definitely was. And, you know, he was running the, the low groove. Sometimes when those guys move up to that green racetrack in the high groove, they'll wear those tires out a little more quicker than the guys on the bottom. But he was on the very bottom and had that tire problem. So after Bush gets back up to speed, we'll check exactly how much ground he's lost to Liam at Kenseth. If the race stays green through a set of pit stops, it won't hurt him that badly. But if the caution comes out between now and when the other leaders make a pit stop, he's got some troubles. Here's Matt Kenseth, third leader of the race. And why don't we take you through the field? Get you an update on where everybody's at at this point. We'll start with the leader and Matt Yoko. Alan, one year, one year ago, Matt Kenseth finished second here at Chicago. He only got about 20 minutes of practice last night. That's just how good the race car was. Right now, they're looking at an air pressure adjustment on the right front. If the car stays the way it is right now, he's currently leading. Greg Biffle, Greg Biffle earlier, Matt, got that defender damage from a contact with Robbie Gordon. That is not causing a severe problem for him right now, but they do plan on putting a patch over that left front when he comes in for a pit stop. Marty? Caution flags out. Let me interrupt you for a minute. Debris in turn number one, and the yellow flag is out at lap 43. That is something Kyle Busch and the five definitely did not want to see. 
He wanted all these cars to cycle through, all make a pit stop under the green, and then the caution flag come out because now he's what a lap down, Alan. He's a lap and a half down, and then and he's even the more. first lap guy. There you go. Yeah. The first car that's not on the lead lap would be given that uh, lucky dog pass by NASCAR and get onto the lead lap, but that's not going to be Kyle. He's about the fifth one a lap down. It's going to be Travis Geisler who gets the uh, free pass. So that's tough for Kyle Busch. But he'll have to uh, go out the next segment of the race and try and get himself into position to be that first guy one lap down. And he just might yeah. be fast enough to be able to do that right now. Pit road is closed. That's what the red flag means. Of course, the caution flag in NASCAR these days means uh, they no longer race back to the yellow. If you're new to NASCAR, that might, might, you might remember that's something from the past. But uh, now the field is frozen when the caution flag comes out. And NASCAR has taken some lumps over the past few months about the quickness with which they've been able to get the scoring sorted out and get the pit road open. They have a computer system that's tied in with scoring antennas buried underneath the racetrack at this particular speedway. There are eight of those around the track, and this computer system can give them the lineup now within three seconds to get the field squared away. You see how quickly the pit road is open. Tomorrow, Dave will show you that computer system for the first time as part of Discover Card Countdown to Green. Check out the pit stops. Matt Kenseth is in. The 17 car is in. They're making a track bar adjustment. The car was on the free side. They're also going to shuffle the air pressures originally. Matt wanted to do it all the way around. Now we're only on the left side to Marty Snyder. Casey Kane running third. He is loose in. They go down on the wedge on the left side. That will make that tighter. Tight off. They go up on the track bar. That will make that looser, Dave. Greg Biffle's car was just a little bit tight, so they took some air out of the right front tire that they changed. Four tires of fuel for Biffle. Looks like Robbie Gordon. How about that? Beat him out. Five of Robbie Gordon and that crew. Congratulations, guys. They've been doing a great job. They've been gaining him some spots on pit stops pretty regularly here of late. And here it is as they come off the pit lane. Robbie Gordon, the new leader. Matt Kenseth, Greg Biffle, Casey Kane going to follow him out. So Robbie Gordon off pit road first on the stops, Dave. Alan, they did take four tires on that stop, and they are expected to do well on pit road. That's Robbie's uh, Nextel Cup crew from the 31 car in that series, except for the gas and the catch can man. So those guys are used to working together, busting off quick stops. Matt? And the 20 car, Mike Bliss, he's still chasing his first series win. He won a truck race at Chicago's sister track, Kansas. His car was a little too tight. They tried to free it up. He was the second best car in the final practice session. Very stout today. Marty? Matt, Joe Nemechek is in six, and uh, he's a perfect example of what Wally was talking about early on in the race. When he first went out, he was complaining. Car was loose. Brian Petty said, just stick with it. It'll get better. When they came down pit road, they made no changes. Car was perfect at the end of that run. You got to have it loose at the beginning of the run, right, Wally? Got it, Marty. If you can hang on to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to hang on to it. There's a trick to it. Yeah, there is a big trick. All right, set to go back racing. Watch Kyle Busch, second car inside line. He's the key man to see if he can get around the leaders Green flag. and get his lap back before a caution comes out, or at least be the first car one lap down before a caution comes out. Well, he's trying to squeeze up there, isn't he? Justin Labonte in the 44 in front of him he is the first car one lap down for now. Clear high now. these guys. Hermie Sadler in the 0-2 is not able to get up to speed. Cars going by him, by him on the inside and outside. But being the trained professionals they are, they all made it by. Whoa, Kyle Busch goes down to the inside. Yikes. Mm. I'm sure that Eddie Masson kept the spotter for Justin Labonte in the 44 car had an anxious moment as he's trying to explain to him he had cars on the inside, cars on the outside, cars everywhere. And behind those cars, the first to lap down, we're watching, there's Mike Bliss in the 20 trying to take third spot away from Greg Biffle in the 60. Yeah, what you don't want to hear from your spotter, you're in the middle. <laughs> That's not what you want to hear. So Bliss to third, Biffle to fourth. And here side. comes Jeff Burton in that nine car. Yep. Side by side. Whoa, oh, wow. big wiggle. He was side by side for fifth. Loose, uh -huh. loose in. 
Nice. He's got nowhere on the rear spoiler. Thanks to Joe Nemechek. And Truex Jr. on the charge to the inside in the eight. It looks like the Truex in the eight car just moving up to the top of the racetrack and being as fast as the leaders gave him so much confidence in this racetrack. He's able to run down the bottom as well as the top. While we continue to watch this, Juan Hornaday got up in the marbles and turns one and two last lap. Line. He lost about uh, five positions in that shuffle. But has since gotten it back going. Truex Jr. in eighth. Trying to take seventh from Joe Nemechek in the 87. And Dave Burns can give us more on the NASCAR Busch Series Championship leader. Alan, the adjustment they made on that car was pretty big. They took two spring rubbers out oh, of the left rear. Ian David Scrammy. David, I'm sorry, but I was watching all that. Wow, Scrammy's got a lot of damage on the right rear from that. Got a spring just came off his car or something roll off. Oh, man. And still no call. I guess Scrammy's trying. question is how much damage does Truex have on the eight car, if any? Ahead of them, you see Kyle Busch in the five, has gotten by Justin Labonte. So Kyle Busch is now the first car one lap down. As David Stremme brings his wounded car onto pit road. Doesn't sound very happy either. No. And NASCAR is looking at damage to the back of Martin Truex Jr.'s car, what they call the bumper cover. Because Truex Jr. has made contact with either the wall or the 32 car. We can see the rear bumper cover just flapping in the breeze as he goes down the back stretch. You get a chance, you have a flat. And for the lead. Tens of 17. We'll lead that lap. It's just black flag. Yep. Championship leader just shown the black flag for the flapping debris. Robbie Gordon hanging tough. A lot going on all of a sudden oh, all at once. Yeah. Hell yeah. Caution is out for debris. And check out Mike Bliss in the 20 car. He comes up right. I, I thought the 17 was in front last time. What happened? Robbie passed him back, and now the caution's out. Okay. So. <laughs> we back this up for just a minute. Okay. Show you what started this whole sequence of events between Truex Jr. and David Stremme. Okay, show us that. Here we go. Okay, Martin down the bottom. Got a little bit loose. He went to save the race car, and unfortunately, David Stremme was there. And actually, Truex did not hit the outside retaining wall. The contact was made with the 32 car that ripped off that bumper cover. There we see the contact between the... Mm. That's a good thing Stremmy was there. He would have hit the wall. Wall. On board the trim spa car. Watch the eight-car wiggle as he goes down. Uh, too far on the inside. Can't see it, but wow. Easy now. There it is. That spotter was about five seconds slow and said, easy now. So that started things. Then debris came off the cars and dropped onto the racetrack. While that was going on, Kenseth was trying to take the lead from Robbie Gordon, but Robbie held him off. And... Kyle Busch was the first car, not on the lead lap. He gets the lucky dog pass, and he's now back in the swing of things after his flat tire earlier. And Dave, what's going on with the eight car? <laughs> well, of course, he's a championship leader, so that's big news for him to get in trouble. He did apologize to his crew over the radio, said, I got loose going in trying to get around him. When Kevin Mannion, the crew chief, heard that story, he said, okay, go over to the 32 crew guys and apologize to them, spotter to spotter, because we know we hit him. That's yeah, a big break for the eight car, too, because now he can take his penalty under yellow and not green. So he's not going to lose that as much time. And uh, make repairs to that thing that's flapping around. So there's your Bush Series championship leader coming down pit road for repairs. We are under caution number three in the Twister 300 at Chicagoland. Getting ready to come to the green for the restart with Robbie Gordon leading here at Chicagoland. Let's check downstairs and hear from David Stremme. Hey guys, we were uh, checking on uh, the Martin Truex situation, first of all with the eight car. And Martin was able to come down pit road and get that car serviced 
but they did not change tires. You're only allowed three sets of tires during the whole race here. So they did not want to waste that set until they found out how the car was working. They didn't see any tire rubs that would cause them to change them either. So they cut off half the bumper, put some tape on the rear end, made some wedge adjustments, and he's going racing. Okay, we'll hear from David Stremme in a minute, who's back in the garage after his contact with Mark Truex Jr. And we'll check uh, Truex's position on the restart, which is going to be 25th lead lap. And Kyle Busch was the lucky dog. Yep. So he's back on the lead lap now. 28th place, and he did pit and take on fresh tires under his caution. Robbie Gordon leads, Matt Kenseth is second, Mike Bliss third, Greg Biffle fourth, and Jeff Burton is up to fifth after starting 17th. And again, Casey Kane, Joe Nemechek, Michael Waltrip, J.J. Yaley, and Ron Hornaday rounding out the top ten. Kenseth in the 17 car on the very bottom of the racetrack. The leader, Robbie Gordon, 55 on the top as they battle down the back stretch side by side. Be a good horse race. It's a horsepower race. Mm, it sure is. All right, there we go. So new leader, Matt Kenseth, who was working on Robbie Gordon for the lead when that last caution came out. I mentioned David Stremme before, involved in the incident with Martin Truex Jr. He is with our Marty Schneider. And he's had a moment to uh, to cool down. I know you got a long explanation from your team as to his apology. What was your take on the wreck? Well, I mean, our deal was just ride around. I mean, obviously, uh, restarts are pretty wild, and, they, and they've gotten a two-wide racetrack here. But uh, Martin decides to drive like an idiot. You know, a championship contender is supposed to drive like a champion. I'm very disappointed in him because uh, we're three deep in the backstretch. I give him a position. Joe and him are running hard. I go outside of him, and he uh, just run me down the corner. He said he got in too hard. But, uh, you know, it seems like... This just follows our whole year with the whole trim spot team. I mean, just been up and down season, had a really good car, and uh, I'm just very disappointed. And this team has had terrible misfortune lately, and there's another spin on the racetrack. That's Todd Sidney oh, coming man. back through traffic. Oh, wow. How is that close? Caution's out. <laughs> good job on everybody's part there, but missing them. And we got one off the pace on the apron in turn four. You okay, Todd? As the field slows for the caution, that's Derek Koch who's coasted back around to the pit lane. Todd Segedy with a crash and then a wild ride back down through the high-speed traffic. Wow, as he came across that racetrack, these cars have not slowed down hardly at all. But somehow they missed him. Crew, he gives a signal to the truck that he's okay. I guess we're talking in the uh, happy hours. You know how fast you're going when? Yeah. <laughs> Start going backwards. Start going backwards. And concrete walls. But but I will say the speedway here over the winter, they did install the safer barriers, so that, goodness, that blow was a lot less than it would have been. All right, here's what happened to last year's NASCAR modified champion. Can't tell a whole lot there. But watch this now. Watch as he comes back across. Here we go. He's he's by, himself. by himself, yep. See that this, car is, rebound? this is where it gets scary for a driver, both when you're wrecking and when you're trying to miss it. Oh, Is that Robert Presley went by on the inside? Looks yeah. Like he might have been. Oh, well, there was a car beside of him as he went down in turn one. And up high. Stay low. Watch this. Yikes. And there Presley goes by on the inside in the 47 car. I need the big broom on that one. And there's Todd out of his car. Good news there. But the caution is out for the fourth time here at Chicagoland Speedway. Matt Kenseth is your leader. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Matt Kenseth, your leader. Robbie Gordon second, Mike Bliss third, Greg Biffle fourth, Jeff Burton fifth. Followed by Casey Kane, Michael Waltrip, Joe Nemechek, Ron Hornaday, and J.J. Yaley. Great restart, Matt Kenseth, the 17 car. And Biffle goes by Bliss on the outside. Bliss, does he have a problem? Maybe just missed a shift or something. 20 cars slowing it up to speed. And Jeff Burton trying to work some lap traffic in the nine car and pick up a spot at the same time. He's working on Bliss for fourth. Oh, 
not quite. Burton started 17th. In that nine car, only his fourth NASCAR Busch Series race in 2004 for Roush Racing. Matt, what's going on with the 20, do you know? Well, BP, he hasn't said anything on the radio as crew chief. Steve Addington is speculating that he just missed a shift on the restart. He's going now. Yeah, he's got it going now. Just a shift on the tires, step on the gas. These cars have a lot of horsepower, pretty easy to break grip. And uh, Jeff Burton, let's hear from him, uh, from Marty on him. Well, he wanted to know what Matt Kenseth had in his car. He went over to uh, send his crew chief, Tony Liberati, down to Matt Kenseth's pits and asked them what they're running air pressure-wise. That's where we need to be right now. Our car's just way too tight. He went down there, and they found out. That's what they're going to do on the next stop, Matt. Marty, the 20 car, Bliss, runs in fourth. He indeed radioed his team and said, I missed a shift on that last restart. He has now lost a lot of distance to the 60 of Biffle, but he is slowly working his way back up to the leaders. He's managed to hold off Jeff Burton for a fourth spot, Matty. So Bliss hanging in there, driving for Joe Gibbs in that 20 car. And he's one of the drivers, 14 of them in the race today, that will also be in tomorrow's 400 mile. It's uh, got Robbie Gordon and Greg Bickle kind of close in tow. Then a gap back to this race for fourth, fifth, and soon to be sixth as Joe Nemechek tries to reel these guys in. By the way, the championship guys were on pit road a minute ago. Kyle Busch is kind of tearing back up through the pack. Now that he's back on the lead lap, he's up to 16th. But Martin Truex Jr. is in 21st. Now, Burton has already moved up to the top of the racetrack to try to find some grip up there. I'm surprised that quickly after a restart, these guys moved to the top. Long. Yeah, he, well, he was, it looked like he was searching. The last three laps, he's kind of done something different every single lap. His car looks like it works really good on the bottom like he is right now, but he looks like he's moving up and down, just trying to find the best place for that car to run. But he's not gaining on Mike Bliss on that 20 car. It's not like the 20 cars are slouch. I mean, he qualified sixth. No, he's a very good race car, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. He's got four straight top ten finishes over the last month. Fourth, third, sixth, fifth. And his tenth in the uh, NASCAR Pro Series championship standings. Coming into the Chicago Land race. Jeff Burton in the nine car. What a great qualifying run he had in his uh, next L Cup car for tomorrow's race. Team that's been struggling all season. Sponsorship uh, not as much as they need. And uh, he's qualified sixth for tomorrow's race. Be good to see him have a nice run for Roush Racing. And right now, Roush Racing is doing pretty well. They're running first, third, and fifth. And could be first, second, and fifth. Yeah, Greg Biffle driving for Roush Racing. In the 60, going after Robbie Gordon for second. It's on the inside, the preferred line. Looks like Biffle will have that spot, and does. And now Biffle to set off after Matt Kenseth and pursue him for the lead. Hey, Robbie looks like he's... Got his hands full a little bit with that car. It looks like right, he gets right in the center, right around that bump, and the car gets loose or wiggles. Yeah, I've, I've been watching Kyle Busch, guys, and he is just flying up through the field. He restarted back around 21st position. That pass is for 14th, and Jamie McMurray in the one is for 13th. Remember, this was a guy that was on pit road, unscheduled under the green, came out a lap down, caution trapped him a lap down, got it back. Davey's on the move back toward the front. And they told him, Alan, just to be patient. Of course, Kyle's a young guy, so they want him to be patient on the restart, be patient passing cars. It's a long race. We've got plenty of time. I got the lead lap. And for third place, Mike Bliss by Robbie Gordon. And while it looks like Robbie Gordon's problems that you talk about are starting to compound, I think they're only going to get worse. Yes. And Kyle Busch in the five, finishing the pass on Jamie McMurray for 13th. A check here as he comes to the start finish line how far behind the leader Matt Kenseth he is. 9.4 seconds after uh, 77 laps, working lap 78. We'll see, uh, keep an eye on the, the lap time intervals there and see what kind of a 
eat into he's able to make uh, on uh, Matt Kenzer. Well, he's in, he's been in traffic, so he's going to be a little bit tougher to make some time on Matt. But once he gets in clean air, that, that wasn't very well said, was it? Or, I, I have to come up with a better phrase yeah. than that. We understood what you meant. Yeah, okay. So Robbie Gordon sliding back a little bit now to fourth and in danger of losing that as Jeff Burton closes in on him. Dave, what's up with the 55? Uh, AB, is it too early in the season to tell uh, Wally that he was exactly right? Well, no. We'll get him off on the good foot. How's that? Okay, okay. That car is definitely <laughs> loose and getting a little bit looser. I talked with the crew chief about it and he said, you know, we just can't seem to dial the loose out of it, but we're going to keep trying. It was loose yesterday. It was loose today. It's been loose all race, but just a little bit, but we're trying to fix it. Lose another spot right here. Well, I tell you, as soon as the nine car got anywhere close to him, he got him so loose he did, had to chase the car up the hill, talking about Robbie Gordon in the 55. Yeah, I don't think Robbie wants anybody behind him, so I think if Robbie sees somebody coming in his mirror, he's just going to move out of the way because, like I say, BP, you get somebody behind you when your car's loose already, makes it twice as bad. Not too good. So Jeff Burton to fourth, Robbie Gordon back to fifth, and he's now fallen nearly four seconds behind race leader Matt Kenseth. A little over a third of the way through and closing in on a race record for Bush Series action at Chicagoland Speedway as far as lead changes are concerned. That's a good record. Yep. Seven already today. The record's eight. Matt Kenseth is out in front now. Greg Biffle a second and a half behind him and trying to close in. Coming up on halfway here at Chicagoland Speedway in today's NASCAR Busch Series race, Matt Kenseth is your race leader in the 17. There is one less car on the racetrack in competition now than there was a moment ago. Kenny Wallace coasted down onto the apron in turn one and then around the track and behind the wall. And we see the driver taking his helmet off. That's not a good sign. That means he is not going to participate anymore today. Wheel comes off, helmet comes off. He's finished. All right, last time we tried through the field, we had a caution flag come out and interrupt us. Let's try it again. The leader, Matt Kenseth, out in front, and that will be Matt Yoakum who will lead us off. And Matt Kenseth chasing his second win in 2004. The chassis adjustment on his stop helped the car in entry, but it's tightened up a little bit too much on exit. They're also keeping in mind fuel mileage. Their next stop should come somewhere around lap 116. Dave? Greg Biffle still having trouble with his car, Matt. It was tight the last time they stopped. It's still tight. Next time they come, they want to take some wedge out of, or put some, make a wedge adjustment, make an air pressure adjustment, and then fix the left front. They didn't fix it last time because they didn't want to lose track position. Matt? Mike Bliss back up to third. Now the chassis adjustment his team made on the last stop helped the tight off problem, and he is slowly working his way to the front. He's never won in NASCAR Bush Series competition. Maybe today is the day, Marty. Matt, Jeff Burton's car is in the, the fourth position. It's really come to life in this segment. It is still tight. He said it's better, but we need to be better yet if we want to win this race. He said, I want to run the bottom of the racetrack, but my car's so tight, it just won't let me. He has finished third in both of his races here at Chicago, Dave. Marty, for Robbie Gordon, there's a reason why his crew chief, Bob Temple, thinks they can adjust this car and make it better. It's been loose, loose, and they can't seem to get it out, but the car finished seventh at Darlington this year, and the two races at Nashville this year, a fifth and a 14th. Robbie loves this car, and they think they can adjust it. Marty? Dave Casey Kane has just gone around Michael Waltrip on the racetrack. He said his car is tight off, the, off of the corners. Tommy Baldwin, his next Hell Cup Series crew chief, is sitting on the box with Paul Andrews. They have also been tight on the restart. Just really hurt him. They lost three spots in three laps on the last restart. Michael Waltrip just behind him. Michael's car tight as well. That's good for Michael because he loves to run that high line. This is the same car Michael used to win the race with at Nashville. Behind Michael Waltrip on the racetrack, Joe Nemechek, he said, his car is pretty good. They made no adjustments last time. Maybe they should have freed it up a little bit because now it is tight. Great in the clean air, but when he's behind someone, this should sound familiar to Wally, he gets too tight. Same thing for Jason Leffler. He said when he's behind another race car, his car is too tight. But when he's free by himself, the car is awesome. Matt? And the leader has dropped off the track and is coming to pit road at lap 90. Did we just hear from Matt? Expect him in at 116? Right. So yep. an unscheduled stop for Matt Kenseth. And Matt Yoakum has hustled down to add more for us. He jumped on the radius and I'm coming now, coming now. Get ready, get ready. The guys are going to work on the left side, adding fuel to the race car. The leader, four tire change as they go to work on the left side of Kenseth's car. He's finally down in the way. Yeah, man, he, he, he 
obviously felt something he didn't like. If, if uh, when you jump on the radio, go, I'm coming out, coming out. That means there's something with that race car that you felt that you didn't like and you want to get it changed. And I, I was watching him because behind him, Mike Bliss was passing Greg Biffle for a second, and all of a sudden they came up on Kenseth in a hurry in three, like he it was at the end of the back stretch or something when he decided he needed to hit pit road in turn four. Matt, you got more? Allen looking at the right front tire. You can see where the inside shoulder has completely worn away. He had a flat right front. There you go. Okay. Good catch by Matt Kenson. Right. Tell you what, after you hit these walls a few times after blowing a right front tire, <laughs> it doesn't take much to hit pit road, does it? You get that feel <laughs> down. <Yeah. laughs> And so, because Bliss was passing Greg Biffle for a second, just as Matt Kenseth was heading for pit road, there's your new leader. And our uh, new record for uh, lead changes in this race, as we've had our eighth one today, so that equals the mark. Now this, we were talking about it earlier, BP, this racetrack looks great. Looks yeah. very racing. Boy, it really does. These guys are running high, they're running low. It looks terrific. So Mike Bliss now led uh, four races this season, all coming in the last five events of the NASCAR Bush Series. Joe Gibbs Racing Team with some momentum on their side as Bliss tries to scramble back into contention for a top finish in the championship. Just joining us, championship has been a big story of the day today. Kyle Busch was leading early when he had a uh, flat right front. That was at lap 40. He dropped on a pit road, fell a lap and a half down. He's since gotten back on the lead lap and is up in 11th position. And then uh, Martin Truex Jr. around lap 54 tangled with David Stremme and got some damage on his car. He was black flagged, had to make repairs, and he is struggling along back in 25th position. And, and struggling is right, uh, Alan. He's not going anywhere in that car, but Kyle Busch is flying in that five rose car. There he is, just past Tony Raines for 10th. This could be a... Uh, Big points gained for him today. Mm -hmm. And folks, the five car, Kyle Busch, I talked to his dad, Tom, earlier today, and three years ago, almost to the day, he was here testing a truck for Jack Roush. He was going to drive a truck at 16 years old. NASCAR woke up and said, you know, wait a minute, that's a little bit too young to be driving in competition. They changed the rule, you had to be 18, so here he is, 19 years old, has won three times already in the NASCAR Busch Series. It's unbelievable the, uh, the amount of talent that these kids are coming to the upper levels of NASCAR racing with. They're starting younger. Go-kart racing and, and quarter midget racing like Bobby Labonte and his track there in Salisbury, North Carolina. They're starting at a young age. Used to be where when you were a kid, you could play Little League Baseball, but you couldn't really race. Now you can race just like you could play Little League Baseball or football, and it's showing in these uh, latest generations of drivers that are coming along. And they're getting in some pretty nice equipment. Which definitely helps. And this is big. The leader, Mike Bliss, 20, is put in the NASCAR booster. His points leader, Mark Truex Jr., the eight car, a lap down. Chance of victory today, gone away. He had a crash earlier with David Strimmey, but Wally, a couple laps ago, this happened. Yeah, I would say his car's probably a little bit loose right now without that... Uh, Rear body work just touches the wall. Insult to entry. Yes. Yeah. That's a little, little kiss of the fenders there on the barrier. I think Gray didn't back up too much off the throttle as he kissed the wall. So Truex Jr. now a lap down in 26th place, Dave. Alan, is it too early in the year to tell Wally that he's right twice no, in the same no, race? No, don't do it, please. <laughs> <laughs> really loose on the eight car. Just went down to his pit. Kevin Mannion, the crew chief, said bad, very bad. And here's the third place car on pit road at lap 105. It's a little early for the green flag stops. Jeff Burton is in. Marty. Alan, it is a little early. Jeff said, I might have a tire going down. They were about five or eight laps away from their pit stop. They said, let's go ahead and do it now. What they changed is one pound out of both left side tires. Jeff's car has been tight all day long. That pound should loosen his car up. He feels like we have a shot to win if he can stay up front with these guys. It shouldn't hurt him too bad. Said 18 second pit stop. Folks, did you see what happened? The jack man did not get the car up high enough with that one pump. The rear tire changer took the lug nuts off. The tire was hitting the ground would not come off. Cost him about an extra three seconds. So Jeff Burton rejoins the chase. We'll see where he cycles back into the field here in a second. The leader is Mike Bliss. He's got a second and a half on Greg Biffle. Now Casey Kane moves up to third. Robbie Gordon fourth and Michael Waltrip fifth. 
Then you've got Jason Leffler, Joe Nemechek, Ron Hornaday, Kyle Busch, ninth, and Tony Raines, 10th. Now, Matt Kenseth, after his unscheduled green flag stop back at lap 90, is now the second car one lap down in 26th place. And Jeff Burton is going to show in 28th place, and he's going to be the fourth car one lap down. To Kyle Busch. Still moving forward, he's going by Ron Hornaday, the eighth car. That's the two car battle for the eighth position. That car is fast. It is fast. fast in traffic. And here comes Matt Kent with the 17 car who had that unscheduled stop. And he's going to go by these guys pretty, pretty handily because he's got fresher tires. Yes. And all these guys know that. I mean, all the spotters are telling the drivers, like, Kyle, here comes 17, that's on fresh tires. So you're pretty much just going to get out of their way because they're going to pass you. Jamie McMurray, Tony Raines on pit road. It's been a tough day to be a, a contender to win this thing. Contenders calamities, if you will, here at Chicagoland today. Kenseth had a problem while being out in front. Bobby Hamilton Jr., heavy favorite to win the race, out with an engine. Kevin Harvick lost oil pressure. Kyle Busch had a flat tire at lap 40. Martin Truex Jr., we talked about his problems, and then Kenseth. And then Jeff Burton, but Jeff Burton's deal was not too bad because he can make the race on one more stop. So if you have any, if you're feeling anything wrong right now, it's not too bad to come in the pits and change it because it's not like you're going to lose an extra lap if this thing goes green. Right, if it cycles. Matt, you got more on that, Kenseth, for us? Benny, besides being down a lap, Alan, he's also short on making it one more stop. Now, Robbie Reiser is still here in Kenseth Pit, but a number of crew chiefs and crew members from the Nextel Cup teams have been here. Chad Canals, Pat Trison, Doug Richard, someone from the 24, someone from the 10, and also the tire special from the 38, all interested in what might have been the problem on that right front tire that came off Matt Kenseth's car. His crew chief, Cully Barclough, told him, make sure the blower's on to direct air toward that right front inside shoulder to keep it cool. Molly, that kind of goes back to what you were saying just before the race started, how for the guys that are doing double duty, today is as much about learning for tomorrow as it is winning today. Uh, and you see how many of the guys from the cup side have come over. Yep. They're trying to learn all they can. This is really a great test for tomorrow, that edge. Starting to see some more guys trickle onto pit road. Johnny Sauter, Tim Fidewa. All coming in. Regan Smith is on pit road. So now we'll see when some of these front runners like Mike Bliss and Greg Biffle will begin to come onto the pit road. Joe Nemechek is making his way down off the racetrack on the pit road. And Jason Leffler is in as well. Watching Kenseth try and work his way back up through the traffic. Here's Leffler in for his pit stop. Marty, go ahead. Jason Leffler has been free in tight off Allen. The car's been fairly good. They've been talking him through traffic. They make an air pressure adjustment to help him out. About eight stalls behind him, Joe Nemechek. His car's been really tight on this run, got tighter the longer they ran up. Two rounds on the track bar for Nemechek. Four tires, a little long on the left side. Well, they dropped the jack. There goes Joe. It looks like Robbie Gordon, the 55 car, ran out of fuel because he was slow coasting to the apron on three and four, Dave. First, I've got the 60, Benny. Greg Biffle is in. They're going to make a wedge adjustment for Biffle. His car was still tight. Remember, they were going to try to put that tape patch on the left front as well to help the handling of that car. Meanwhile, Robbie Gordon coasting into his pit. Out of fuel. He said, guys, I think be able to tell what pit road speed is because my tachometer doesn't work. So they will try to change four tires on that car. It's still loose. Make the adjustment you just saw with the wrench in the rear window and try to restart that car and get Robbie going again. And not lose a bunch of time doing it. Make sure he doesn't stall, but... Was he, was he running when he, or wasn't he running? I, I couldn't tell so. there. He was coasting down pit road. And we got trouble in turn three. Robert Presley is around. The caution flag is out. In the middle of green flag pit stops. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> now you got your work cut out for you, Alan. And here we go. I'm going to sit here until you get it all sorted out. Field is frozen. And this brings into, um, brings into mind a, a minor adjustment to the rules on freezing the field that NASCAR made this week regarding cars on pit road when the caution comes out. We'll get to that in a yeah. minute. Here's a guy that did run out of gas by the looks of it. And he will not training. start. Jason Keller. Matt. Go, 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 go. Out of gas. They they finally got it to fire as he was leaving the pit box. It stalled again, and now they are just pushing it down pit road. It will not start. Now they finally get it to go, BP. And Mike Bliss, the 20 car, has not pitted yet. 
Pit road is closed. There we see Robert Preston, the 47 car. Oh, he makes a little contact there with what? the 14 car. It looked like that a car kind of case. Kind of yeah, the he was, the it looked like the car was wiggling, like it was almost maybe wiggling it for fuel or something. He might have been out of fuel and just slow in front of the 14. That's probably what happened. Yeah. It's on board Martin Truex. Watch out, right here in front of you, watch out right in front of you. Oh, that was, that was weird. Come on around, come on around. Caution is down, caution is down, caution is down. And Presley has come down pit road while it is closed. Well, it, they didn't have to push it to restart it or anything, and he got it to pit road, so... I don't know. I don't know either. We'll have to follow up on that one, see what the team says. Because <laughs> the replays only lead to more questions. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Mike Bliss is the leader, Michael Waltrip is second, Kyle Busch is third, J.J. Yaley is fourth. Uh, fifth is going to be Ashton Lewis, followed by David Green and Mike Wallace. All those cars are on the lead lap. Those are the lead lap cars who had not pitted yet. Justin Labonte's the first car lap down at the caution. He gets the lucky dog pass. He'll come around in eighth. Everybody else is at least a lap down. Uh, I can't... And so what's going to happen here is some of these guys aren't going to pit. We're going to have a bunch of people on the tail end of the lead lap right. and restart. Is pit, pit road not open? Yes, sir. Pit road is closed for the moment. Oh, I see him down there now. Okay. Robert Presley drops some debris apparently on his way in. Got you. So we'll take a break here before the pit stops. Another twist of plot here at Chicagoland Speedway today. Back at Chicagoland Speedway as the pit road is open for the lead lap cars. Mike Bliss comes in to the attention of his crew. As the car runs, Mike Bliss's car gets tighter and tighter. They're going to make a wedge adjustment on the 20 car. He was expected to pit at lap 115 before the caution came out. Just in front of Mike Bliss is Michael Walter. Four tires up, one round on the track bar, half pound on the right front tire. That means his car was tight. They're trying to loosen it up. Dave? Bottom of your screen, Kyle Busch now all the way up to third. His car a little bit tight off of turn number two. Air pressure in the right rear track bar adjustment as well to try to fix that. Might be a little loose at the start of the run, but they think this will help Kyle a lot. And Michael Walter, bad pit out, you see, is going to be Mike Bliss off the pit lane. And you see Bliss had a 19-second pit stop. Hang up somewhere. What Matt. happened down there, Matt? Wally, the hang-up was on the left front. Issues when they came around that left front tire. Lost a lot of time here on pit road. Ooh, I hate it when I have issues on pit road. Okay, so a lot of guys now are going to have a decision to make to stay on the tail end of the lead lap or to pit for fresh tires here. We'll follow up when we come back to Chicagoland. We had the caution that came out in the middle of green flag pit stops, leaving eight cars on the lead lap. Another eight cars who had just pitted under green decided not to stop under the yellow. When the leaders pulled off, they moved up behind the pace car. The cars they pitted came out behind them. They're basically a mile and a half behind, but in front of the leader. Tail end of the lead lap. Got it? Yep. There we go. How'd I do? You did pretty good. All right. So the leader of the race is going to be Michael Waltrip in the 99. And it's all this car back <laughs> yeah. here. All of these cars in front of him. All these guys right there are on the tail end of the lead lap. And you see we've uh, set a new record for leaders and lead changes in NASCAR Bush Series racing here at Chicagoland today. And to further complicate matters, several cars stopped and topped off fuel the last lap of caution flag, thinking they might be able to run 78 laps. Well, but it, uh, if they get a caution in between them, uh, they can stay on the racetrack. Ah, the drama we weave. Yes. <laughs> so Matt Kenseth, up at the head of the field, is actually the ninth place car. And let's see what happens. Green flag at lap 124. Now, this is when you're the leader. You really have to show a lot of patience and good judgment. And Matt Kim with the 17 car, the reason they did pit, because remember, he made an unscheduled stop 20, 30 laps ago. So he has several laps on his tires, but he wanted to be in front of the leader, trying to get the lap back, still trying to win the race. Caution comes out now. All of those guys will get that mile and a half to make up when the pace car would come out in front of leader Michael Walter. So that's what they're hoping for. 
course, whenever the field is bunched up on these restarts and the traffic is racing tightly together at high speed, things can happen fairly easily. Waltrip right in the middle of the group. There he is on the inside of Joe Nemechek. Nemechek, the 87, trying to pin him down behind Hornaday. Oh, oh Robbie Gordon, Gordon high. Yep, just cost him a lap. He was in front of the leader. Look at Mike Bliss for the race lead and Joe Gibbs, number 20. Michael's going to have, have to give there. In traffic, Mike Bliss gets the lead away, and here comes Kyle Busch in the five. That's the guy you got to worry about. Kyle Busch in five, I agree with you. Michael Waltrip, 99, is back up on the high side, his favorite spot to run, but with these fresh tires, it's obviously not the best place to run as Kyle Busch, the five car, goes by and takes over second. Ooh, Kyle Busch, a little bit loose, getting in there. Tries to run up underneath Joe Nemechek in the 87. The race for first and second is between the 20 and the 5. Mike Bliss and Kyle Busch. Michael Waltrip is third in the 99. All those other cars around them are trying to stay on the tail end of the lead lap. And the blue and white number 29 is Ricky Craven. This is his first NASCAR booster his race since the year 2000. Car out of Richard Childress stables. That's that uh, employee support of the Garden Reserve program that's had all the different drivers in it so far this year. Bobby Labonte drove it. Tony Stewart drove it. Gary Earnhardt's going to drive it later this year. Uh, Mike, Michael back up on the outside. And Kyle's got to be careful here. He's got to use his head on this deal. He can gain a lot of points today, so he doesn't need to force the issue. He's got a fast race car. He just really needs to be patient here. And here comes Robbie Gordon back in that 55 car. Oh! Oh, did you see him slam on the brakes? Caution is out for debris in turn three. And all of those guys that are in front of Mike Bliss that were on the tail end of the lead lap are going to get a mile and a half back. And Robbie may be the lucky dog. Either, either he or Craven, I'm not sure who was in front when yeah, the field was frozen. Waiting to hear and uh, double check for sure. But you see Mike Bliss slowing down. The pace car will get in front of him. And all these guys, Matt Kenseth, Greg Biffle, Jason Leffler, Jeff Burton, Casey Kane. There's the debris. Bungie cord, looks like. Yep. Uh, Casey Atwood, Ron Hornaday. They all get that free mile and a half and get to come all the way back around. And now they'll all go on pit road, get their tires, get their fuel, and they probably can go, go the, the rest, rest of the, of the way. way. Yep. And, it, and it is going to be Ricky Craven that gets the lucky dog free pass. Okay. So he is a lucky dog. Yeah, a lucky dog, and, and that's going to put either Nemechek or Robbie Gordon right up there on the restart. Good position. Although as loose as Robbie's been, I don't know if he yeah. wants to be there. <laughs> so it's going to be seven cars there, plus Craven, eight cars. So we've just doubled the number of cars on the lead lap. All right, pit road's going to be open this time. And because we just had a caution flag and a lot of people just made pit stops, they're going to allow the lead lap and non-lead lap cars to all pit on this time around if they choose to. They call that a quickie yellow. And we'll see if anybody comes in. You know, I don't another, think the leader. They got to come in. They all got to come in. For fuel anyway. For fuel only. That's yeah. right. Here they all come. As I was just going to say, as you have to remember in the NASCAR Bush Series, the number of tires you can change under caution is limited, so. Right. All right. You need that fuel. Tires or fuel, what's it going to be? Leaders in. Looks like everybody just put in fuel. Yep. Fuel only for the 20. But 17 has to have four tires. Wow. Look the out. 20 car, close call on exit. I'll say. Just needed a few seconds of fuel. He was six laps shy. I see one only guy on the five tires. car of Kyle Busch. Greg Biffa will take fuel only as well. Both had tires left to put on. Neither chose to. Well, Dave, the opposite end of the spectrum is a guy like Jeff Burton is back in the ball game right now. Four tires for Jeff Burton. A pound out of both left side tires. A quarter pound in the right rear. Car's a little bit tight. He said, guys, this car can win the race. Just give me a good stop. Looks like Matt Kenseth has got tires. Casey Kane got tires. Hornady. Jeff, Jeff Burton got tires. Jason, Jason Leffler. Yep. I 
Johnny Sauter got a set of tires there, but he's not on the he, he, uh, no, he's not no. on the lead lap there. Well, now things get interesting. Yeah, this is going to get good now. Here's the uh, jam up on pit road. We were oohing and on about. Watch, watch the 20 here. There he's leaving. Here comes the 18 of Yaley, and then yeah, Michael Walsh should come out. And those two cars are team cars, 20 and 18. Steve Brisson, the 24 car, going down pit road. Oh, oh there wow. is contact. It did make some contact. But see, you know, you're, you're, uh, you know, when you're a driver, you're relying on your guy saying, go, 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 clear, clear. So you can't see anything from the driver's view. All right, 70 laps to go. Fresh tires for Matt Kenseth and Jeff Burton. Gonna get Will good. they be able to get through the traffic and up to the front? All right, now the car in front, Robbie Gordon, is on the tail end of the lead lap. Yep. The car behind him, the red white car, Justin Labonte, is the leader of the race. Behind him, and poking his nose to the outside, that white hooded car is J.J. Yaley from Joe Gibbs Racing. He is the first car to come off pit road that took fuel only. He is third. Mike Bliss is fourth. But Kyle Busch is fourth. I check that. Uh, Yaley is second. Bliss is third. Bush is fourth. Michael Waltrip is fifth. I was counting Robbie Gordon, but he's on the tail end of the lead lap. Got to get Yaley. Bliss on the inside. Takes that second spot away. Kyle Busch is right with him. Right there. Matt, what about the 18 car? Both Gibbs cars having a great run today, and both can make it till the end. J.J. Yaley, what a great summer he's having. Scored a top 10 his first back in June in Nashville. Has a top five run, possibly even a win going today. And Benny, next month, he will make his next Tail Cup Series first ever start at Michigan. All right. J.J. Yaley won the USAC Triple Crown a year ago for open wheel cars, midgets, sprint cars, and silver crown cars, all three championships, same season. Driving for Joe Gibbs Racing on a program much like uh, Penske Racing did for Ryan Newman a couple of years ago. Some races in the ARCA Series, some races in the Bush Series, some races in the Cup Series. The ABC program has kind of come to be known. So Bliss now back out in front. Here goes Kyle Busch around Yaley for second, or trying to, with Michael Waltrip there in the mix. And the question out there, does everyone have enough fuel to make it to the finish if we don't see another caution flag? We restarted with 67 to go. And the answer is probably no. There probably will be a couple of cars that will make it, a couple of cars are around the fuel, and... There's Kyle Busch, take a look. Oh, Down on the bottom. Yeah, what a move. And he's and, got it. And Michael Walton goes with him. I think Bliss may have got a little bit looser, slipped coming off of turn two there. Had to get out of the throttle. And I think it shocked him so much when he saw the five car on the inside, he lifted off the throttle. I'm, I'm Mike Bliss there, Matt. He mumbled something on the radio that said, we do not copy. He said, guys, I'm sorry, we are blowing up. Oh, what a man. heartbreak for this team. So close to victory again. Gone. Mike Bliss, former NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion. In his 60th start, best finish of third on four different occasions. But he's off the pace and trying to uh, struggle along as best he can. Mm. Yeah, you see the smoke starting to show from out the back of the car. Mm. And the caution's out, trouble behind him off turn four. Regan Smith in the 50 has gone around. All right. Doesn't appear as though he's hit anything yet. Puts the car in gear, but is he going to get stuck? Is it yes, too wet? Yes, he is. There? Look at all that water. He's <laughs> not going anyplace. But we had two rainstorms here in the uh, racetrack area yesterday. One. Mid-afternoon interrupted qualifying, dumped a, a lot of water for about an hour, but then one last night. Started about, what, 9 o'clock or so Central Time? Ring it, ring it, just shut it off. Yeah. Until they get the wrecker out there on the hook, you aren't going anyplace. Might have to get the rescue boat out there. All it takes about a dozen guys to push it out of there. Oh, well, they're going to get three. Okay, three. Now, here we go. Yeah, I've been thinking about Matt Kenseth since uh, that last restart. He came in and topped off the fuel, and he's one of the guys that took tires as well. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of progress he can make up through the field. He's 14th now with 61 laps to go, and he's got fresher tires than most of these guys in front of him. 
Now, you yeah, asked a question a moment ago about making it on fuel. This is helping the situation. Yeah. It may be the fact that all of them can make it now. But I think if you get Kyle Busch out there in clean air, it doesn't matter. Be gone. There's Regan Smith with his little loop-de-loop. -loop. Here's where he should have stood on it. Looking ahead from Jamie McMurray's onboard view. Got in the gray. Yeah, he got it really too high. Spin in front of you. Got to spin in front of you. Here you go. Just use that stick of the car behind you and I'll come on straight through. Okay. And so Smith has been bailed out of his troubled waters and uh, comes in to get some fresh tires. And pit road is closed while the uh, safety officials who came out into the grass to push him away get back uh, into a safer position before they let anybody else come on pit road. So let's take a break here. Justin Labonte is the race leader. That's the good news. The bad news is Kyle Busch is going to run his back bumper with a very fast race car. 60 laps to go in this race. And Justin Labonte, the race leader in the 44. Does he pit now as the pit road is opened? Yes, he does. There he goes. Says yes. So Labonte's in, and some other guys are following him down the pit road, including Mike Bliss, who had the uh, engine going sour on his car when he was leading a little bit ago. Matty? The 44 is in. Labonte, four tires. They finally got this race car where he needed it. It was tight, tight, tight early. And then he finally dialed this in. He had a set of tires left. Bliss's car, the 20, he says he can barely keep it running. His teammate, the 18, J.J. Yaley, his car is pretty decent as well. Justin Labonte, 23-year-old son of Terry, the two-time NASCAR Nextel Cup Series champion. Uh, his 30th, uh, 31st NASCAR Bush Series start today, excuse me. And this is the first one he's ever led. Well, congratulations, Justin. Good for him. So it's been an interesting day for Kyle Busch, who's now the leader of the race. Out in front early, then a flat tire while leading. Dave, things have come back around for him. Well, they sure have. I'm with Lance McGrew, the crew chief, right now. And uh, you know, we were pretty close on fuel before this caution, weren't you? Yeah, we were right there. We actually showed we could make it uh, with the fuel mileage we've been getting so far during the race. So, but uh, this car would have saved you. So, yeah, yeah. If he, I mean, one lap. I mean, we were like right there running out as we crossed the checker flag, but this caution here will give us a couple safe laps. Kind of an up and down day for you, don't you think? Up now. Up now. Boy, it was down earlier. I mean, we've been from the out house to the penthouse all in one day, so if we could just finish this deal off with a little luck on our side. But, I mean, it didn't start. It started off really good, went really bad, and I guess everything comes full circle. It's the nature of racing, guys. Okay. They caught a tough break here, though. Guess who the Lucky Dog Award winner was? Martin Truex. Martin Truex G the restart with 57 laps to go. Well, who's that going to hit the Who outside? else? Yeah, big surprise there. One, two spots, maybe. Got Ashton Lewis there in the middle. If Ashton gives any. Three wide. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, Ron should go thank Mr. Lewis after the race. Joe Nemechek in the 87 is the first car one lap down in 19th place. He slides in between second place J.J. Yaley and third place Michael Waltrip. And that red car on the outside, Mike Wallace. Currently running in the fourth position. Following up his victory in Daytona last Friday night. 27, Johnny Sauter, not on the lead lap. Next one in line for position is the two of Ron Hornaday. That's fifth place. Then Ashton Lewis in sixth. Greg Biffle, seventh. Jeff Burton, eighth. Jason Leckler, ninth. And Casey Kane in tenth. Matt Kenseth is 11th. And remember that some of those guys like Kenseth and Burton and uh, Leckler and Kane have fresher tires than some of these guys in front of them. They're trying to race for these top spots. They've got a long way to go. They've got a lot of cars to pass. And I tell you what, I'm impressed with J.J. Yaley. He's closed up right on the back bumper of the five-car Kyle Busch. He's not driving away like I thought he was going to. Yep, not letting him get away. J.J. Yaley in his 11th NASCAR Busch Series race. And as his crew chief, Doug Hewitt, was talking about a minute ago, getting better every time out, his best two finishes have come in the last two races that he's run. Matt Kenza. Picking up a spot around Casey Kane. That's 10th place now, the yellow 17. And next for position in front of him is the double zero, Jason Leffler. I 
think with a 17 car to win, I think he probably has a car fast enough to win. He has better tires than any of them, but he's going to have to get by some of these cars and then get a caution flag to close it back up yep. on the cars that he hasn't caught yet. Because he's yeah, going to be... He's like I said, he's fast, but he's actually losing ground on the leader. Uh, he lost five seconds behind out last lap. He was like 4.6. So and around 10 feet away, the 12, 21st place car, a lap down. Matt Kenseth was out in front of this race at lap number 90 when he had a right front tire going flat. Dropped onto the pit road under the green flag, fell to 28, the lap down. And then about 25 laps later, the caution flag came out and trapped him there, one lap down. He had to stay out on that caution, go to the tail end of the lead lap, go back racing, get another caution, come back in, go back to the back of the field. And now he's trying to dig out of that hole that, uh, that Lady Locke dealt him with the flat tire back at lap 90. Jason left with a double zero, trying to get by Stacy Compton in 59. Drives on the inside. Can he do it? Looks like he can. But in doing so, he's enabled Kenseth in the 17 to close up right on the back bumper. Compton's a couple laps down in 24th place. And you're looking at the race for 9th and 10th between Leffler and Kenseth in double zero and 17. And Matt lost about a half a second that lap on the leader, Kyle Busch. There's Jeff Burton, another one of the guys that took fresh tires earlier. How about it, Marty? Can he get up there? Well, they're hoping so. They did have, do have the fresher tires now, and there was a very long debate between Tony Liberati, the crew chief, and Jeff Burton as to whether or not to pit that last time. They came to a collective decision that that was their best shot to win. They were going to pit, and at the last minute, Jeff stayed on the racetrack. That only proves one thing, Wally. That's that the driver has the last vote. Isn't that right? Yeah, well, you, you <laughs> hope so. Yeah. If he doesn't come down pit road, you're not going to pit. That's right. And never see Ashton Lewis. Battling with the two car of Ron Hornaday and is going by him. Here comes Biffle. What's wrong with Hornaday, Matt? Well, BP, he's just trying to hold on for a top five finish, just battling that 46 car. They've been battling new car blues all weekend. They spent most of the final practice session just trying to get this race car to quit bottoming out. They even passed on going to see that legendary rock band Kiss last night play in Chicago to try to you know, brainstorm in the hotel room, try to figure out a setup for this race car. They have gone from 29th up to the top five. Oh, boy, I can't believe they missed that. Hornaday shuffled back two spots now, though, Matt, on that last lap. Ashton Lewis got by him, and then Greg Biffle got by him. Ashton Lewis in the 46 is on a roll. Yes, he is going by Mike Wallace. Here goes Biffle, the three wide. Look out. Man, oh, man. So Biffle moves up to the fourth position. Getting greedy out there right now. Yes. Ashton Lewis, 46, still continues to try to get by. Mike Wallace does. Here comes Hornaday. How about Ashton Lewis? Let's talk about him for a second. Started 25th. He's up there now, knocking around for a top five finish today. You see that is a very, very white race car. No fancy logos that perhaps corporations have paid for. His family supporting this team. And we're here. There might be something up with the five. The leader, Kyle Busch, Dave. Here's what he said on the radio, Alan. Motor problems, motor problems. The crew asked him to change the ignition box in the car, and he said, did it. It didn't help. It's terminal. Now, he hasn't lost it yet, but Kyle thinks he's got a problem that will not fix itself in that motor. Man, this, this jinx of being the leader say, is unbelievable. If I was Yaley, I wouldn't pass the leader right <laughs> There it is. 46 laps to go. J.J. Yaley trying to take the lead from Kyle Busch. Man, oh man, this is unbelievable. And Truex looked like he was going to have a disastrous day, which he's had, but he's back in 17th. He probably was going to lose the NASCAR Bush Street points lead. And now, if this five car continues to drift towards the back. And he is drifting. Yes, he is. You see, he's keeping up in the corners, but he's fading on the straightaway. So he's probably running on seven cylinders. That would be my guess. Well. He'll be lucky if he can run on seven cylinders for the next 45 laps. It goes to be on seven cylinders, something has broken. Yeah. And normally when something breaks, there's pieces floating around in there. And sooner or later, they find the place that they lodge, and it's not good. The results are not good. So 27-year-old J.J. Yaley driving for Joe Gibbs in that 18 car leads his first laps in NASCAR Busch Series racing. And he does it here at Chicagoland with 45 laps to go. 
Talked to J.J. yesterday down in the Bush Series garage. Jerry he says Phoenix, Arizona. Asked him what he did for a living. Contract work. Now we're talking about moving dirt and what have you. Can you imagine doing that in Phoenix in the summertime? No. No. Neither. No. Matt Kenseth trying to make up some ground toward the front of the field. That's eighth place he just took away from Jeff Burton. Kenseth in the 17. Nine seconds behind the leader. Ooh, Michael Waltrip. Oh, what did you go for the slide for the life and turn one and two? Got up into the gray. See him losing spots. Greg Biffle went by for third. Ashton Lewis for fourth. Michael back to fifth. A lot of track position he lost. Michael was trying to pass Kyle Bush for the second spot going down in one, and I didn't see what happened, but obviously a little bit loose getting into the corner. Maybe contact the way. I don't know. Well, let's find out. Okay. Show me. Ooh. Got loose. Man, did he get loose. Almost looked like he hit the apron, that left front tire. Matt Kenseth is off the pace again. That's on the back stretch. Headed down, to turn down, three. Mike Kellum off the spotter telling him to get down out of the way. Cars are coming. Be the second right time today. Button. Hear him say, "Put right sides on it." Kenseth had a flat, leading at lap 90, but he's off the pace again. His try to rally for the win is uh, probably over for this race. Yaley's able to hold off Biffle for now. Dave, what's the 60 crew saying about Greg Biffle's car for now? Well, they're saying that car is just a little bit different than the others, and that's why it's Greg's favorite. It is one the California and the Kentucky race, uh, actually second at Kentucky this year. This is the fifth of ten races this car will do this year. Matt, back to you on the 17. And he's in again, and again, a flat right front tire on Matt Kansas Ford. Wow. Sound like a camber issue, doesn't it? Like they're wearing it to the cords. Uh -huh. Yeah. On, on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. It'll get the attention of a lot of people in the next Hell Cup garage for tomorrow's sure race. We talked about earlier in the broadcast, if you're with us, the cars they run the spring, they're sprung so softly in the front when they go down the corner, the car just dives down and, and travels four or five inches. When it does that, the upper control arms suck in so rapidly that it puts a lot of negative camber in the car, which sucks that tire in and puts the tread, the wear pattern, right on the inside of the tire. That's where all the load goes right to that little part of the tire that's yep. on the track. You know, you got to be impressed as quickly as Biffle caught Yaley. He's been able to not only stabilize that gap, but even, even put a little bit more of his distance back between himself and Alan, place. Biffle doesn't want to lead. He's seen what happens yeah. to the leaders. <laughs> yeah. Why would he want to lead, right, Why? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. They're saying, don't pass him. Don't, don't pass, pass him. <laughs> right, Dave? BP, as I went through the garage and talked to guys this morning about passing on this track, they said we could catch up to people, but we couldn't pass them. We'd get about two car lengths behind them, and then we would just stop. Our cars would start to push. It happened time and time again last night in final practice, and soon there was this string of cars who all caught up to each other, but they couldn't pass. And right now, Ashton Lewis, the third place car, the plane car you talked about just a moment ago, the vanilla car, is faster than these two cars. He's in third position and actually gaining on them. Matt? BP, at about the halfway point of the race, they finally fixed his loose entry and loose exit. He's slowly been motoring his way to the top five. His best career finish, a second two years ago at Richmond. He hasn't had a top five finish since the season finale at Homestead. They've had a little restructuring on this team. James Ince has been here on and off this season trying to get input, trying to help this team take it to the next level. Could be another career day for Ashton Lewis. He just needs a little more time and a little more track position. Of course, James since the former Nextel Cup Series crew chief, he told me this morning, James did, this is the first car they've brought to a racetrack that he has hung the body on, and they expected it to be a little bit of an improvement for them, and uh, they've had a strong run. Yep, it makes a big difference when you got down for us in these race cars. It helps make them stick. Ashton Lewis, 32 years old, Chesapeake, Virginia. A mechanical engineering degree from Old Dominion University, and... Here he tries again as Biffle for the lead. See, and the problem that Biffle has, when he gets around, when he runs the groove that he wants to, he's running in exactly the same tracks as the 18 car. And Dave Byrne just talked about it. 
talk about it. When you get there, you get that arrow push, and the car, you just have to simply back off the throttle to let the car turn. It will not turn at all. Just slides across the racetrack when you can't get all the air going over your car. Back in time to see Yaley slip, and Biff will go for the lead. Well, he's got to run that time, BP, but can he keep it down? I don't know, because when that car's on the outside, your car will get loose. Yeah, he keeps it out there. But Biffle looks like he has it, has the lead. Whoops, maybe. Did I speak too soon? He did. He did lead that lap. Here's where he should pull it off. Oh, look at him. Look, look at Yaley run that thing in on the outside. Ran pretty hard, didn't he? Tell you what, that boy is trying wow. to win, isn't he? Good move. Good job. Well, we know one thing for tomorrow. There is an outside lane there if the uh, yeah. Nextel Cup guy's car is handling good enough to use it. Now, Pipple's got to figure out how he can do that one more time because mm -hmm. he led at the line. Oh, oh no! no! Blowing up! He broke a water liner. A uh, water liner okay. came loose. Caution flags out. Another one of the go. leaders. Jinxed. <laughs> Go to the bottom. Did it blow up or blow a tire? The oil in the track. Yeah, from you. From you. <laughs> Blew a hose off a water hose. Yeah, it looked like, like water. Said. Yeah, it looked like water. Yeah. Can you believe that? And he led, so you can officially say another leader was yanked. <laughs> Done in. <laughs> Bad place to be today is out in front. Water tank ready. Get the water tank ready. And uh, bring it in next time by. Bring it. That's Brad Parrott, the crew chief. Instructions for his crew and for driver Greg Biffle. So the caution is out with 20 laps to go. Greg Biffle with troubles just after swapping the lead with J.J. Yaley. Watch right here. That is all water. Man. Good job hanging on that thing. Tell you what, he did do a great job not hitting the wall, not turning the thing around and backing it in the fence. There's a lot of damage to the car, but... Notice how those water hoses always break when you're going into the corner yeah. and not off the corner? Why is they? I don't know. <laughs> I had that happened going in, into turn one in Atlanta one time. It was like, mine was uh, Richmond. And in they, the corner. And they both hurt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, 20 laps to go. Pit road is going to be open. And the question becomes, does anybody have a set of tires left they can change under the caution flag? I don't think so. I would doubt it. Looking back over the, the, the uh, pit stop uh, notes and things, I don't believe anybody's got any tires left. So there'd be no reason for anybody to come in unless... You need water. You need water. Like well, they're all coming in. They're all on pit road. Mike Walsh is going to stay out. Okay, I'm puzzled here. Ah, so am I. Maybe these guys in the pits now can explain it to us. Maybe they've got tires left. 18 got tires. 46 have got tires. Yaley is in. They've got a set of scuffed tires they're going to put on this race car. No adjustments, although the car was a little bit tight. They're just going to set the air pressures for this short run to the finish. He's down and away. Oh, he stalls it. He has stalled it, Marty. Fifth place, Casey Kane on pit road. Matt, four tires, four sticker tires. His car was a little bit tight. A lot of teams taking two tires. We'll see if four beats two, Dave. Well, the 60 car of Greg Biffle, they are going to change four tires that filled it with fuel and then go to work on what the problem may be. Uh, as you talked about up at the booth, they think it's water, too. They have the, the water hose ready, but they have talked about a hose blown off, and they're asking if they can fix it or not, talking to each other. Now they're going to take a look and see if they can get it fixed for Greg and stay on the lead lap. Well, you heard on Dave's mic the engine being turned off. So uh, it looks like it blew a water hose off. Yeah. Pat, give it to him. Just need to put the hose back on, put a clamp on it, and go. They better hurry. We're going to lose the lap. Field's over in turn four now. Hey, it's run for that water. We won't run long. Yeah, it runs, it runs a little wild. In fact, the temperature gauge will go down. Oh, yeah. There's right before it blows up. <laughs> no water left. In no it. water left to temp to measure. Okay, so Mike Wallace stays out on the track and becomes the new leader. Justin Labonte is going to move up to second. Robbie Gordon, third. And Jason Keller to fourth. 
Then you'll get Ashton Lewis off pit road first. He'll be fifth. Jeff Burton, sixth. David Green, seventh. Martin Truex, eighth. Wow. That's unbelievable. And then Casey Kane, ninth. And Ron Hornaday, tenth. J.J. Yaley's going to be 11th. I mean, Yaley goes from leading this thing. Looks like he has it won. The caution flag comes out, and he cannot get by all these cars to well, win. I think that stall right there coming out of yeah. the pits, BP, cost him probably about six or seven spots at least. A couple of seconds might have at least, I, I would think probably at least four spots. Now, while all this goes, it was going on, we came back from that last commercial break just as the lead change was happening. This was just before we came back from the commercial break. Michael Waltrip ran into some troubles. Made contact with Ashton Lewis in 46. And when they made that contact up into the outside retaining wall, goes Michael. Listen. Don't think the 46 knew he was there. I don't think so either. And so Michael Waltrip came down pit road for repairs initially, but back out onto the track. And then has come back in again under this caution flag. You see J.J. Ailey's team. Because they know that victory they thought was in hand is went flying away. It's a very, those victories are so hard to catch. A very elusive thing. Okay. This is going to be pretty good. Mike Wallace is the leader. Did not stop under the caution. The first four didn't stop. Then you've got some guys who took two tires. Then you've got some guys who took four that are a little farther back. And we're going to go green with 16 laps to go. What if Mike Walls pulls off two in a row? He could do this, you know. He's only got about 16 laps to go. He's got to go. When that green flag drops, he's got to go. Man, those guys will never lift for two weeks apart. <laughs> Everybody loves an underdog. Uh, I'm telling you. All right. Well, let's see what happens. And uh, they just waved off the restart. Yeah, good for Mike. Yep, that's good for Mike. That's what Mike wants to hear. And Greg Biffle is still on pit road, by the way, back on pit road, getting more repairs made to the 60 car. So this is a good break for him. We see the fill up back by the windshield trying to put some water in the car. They have a quick fill connector there. And the fellow there in front of the car is uh, getting drenched. <laughs> yeah, with hot water. Yeah. They get, looks like they got big problems down there, Dave. Well, the problem is that they want to start putting the water in. Greg wants them to start putting the water in so they can get off pit road. And now he can hardly get it fired. He wants to beat this field off and stand the lead lap. The problem is the guys didn't have the hose back on yet. So they really got to stop the before the, the horse there. Marty. Well, Dave, as Alan likes to say, a smorgasbord of strategy. Some guys who stayed out, some guys who took two. You took four, Paul Andrews, for Casey Kane. Do you think, obviously, you think it will be, do you, but what about four tires? Why the decision? Well, you know, it's definitely not much time left, but a lot of left and left side tires. Left side tires are very important to make your car handle good. Our car was extremely tight. We felt like we had to do tires, and we felt like four was the only choice for us at this particular time. Uh, you know, knew we'd kind of get beat out by some people staying and some people doing two, but this is what we had to do, and here we go. He's in ninth. A lot of ground to make up, Matt. Doug Hewitt put four tires on J.J. Yaley's car. As good as that car was, Doug, does he have enough time to pass ten cars and retake the lead? Well, we probably should have took on two. Uh, we thought it would make us too tight, put on four, and then the car stalled on us, so we had a little problem there. But um, uh, probably the best thing would have been two, but uh, we'll see. He won so many titles in USAC with the short track feature mentality, and that's what he's got now. You know, this, this hindsight, it's, it's so easy. You know, when the checkered flag waves, it's so easy to sit there, well, we should have changed two shit. But yeah. in the heat of the battle, you got to make those decisions. And Doug made the best one he thought that was available to him at the time. Just if he has enough time. All right, here we go. 15 laps to go. Mike Wallace trying for back-to-back -back wins. Here we go, four wide into turn one. Tim Fido on the inside. Oh. Is that Kenzel trying to get a lap back up on the inside? Yes, it is. He's in 18th place now. They get 17th as he passes the 12th car for Kenseth. He's the first car one lap down after having that uh, cut tire just a little while ago at lap 166. And you know, 
Mike Wallace is just, he's going to drive away from the contenders for the win. Well, he's got the advantage. I mean, he's in clean air, and it is so important at a racetrack like this is to be in that clean air. It gives all the air to your car, pushing it down on the racetrack. All these other guys, they have to struggle because they're in traffic. All right, let Kenseth go, Mike. We yeah. all know he's a lap down. Okay, now pulling behind him. Justin Labonte, the second place car, that orange nose machine, 44. Trying to deal with the lap car of Tim Fidoa, who's in 18th place. Robbie Gordon is third in the 55, then Jason Keller fourth. And somebody just pulled out of the apron in turn one with some mechanical problems and some smoke trailing from behind the car. We'll get a number there in a minute. How about Robbie Gordon, Dave? Well, Alan, it's all about being out of traffic and in clean air. Right now, his car is tight, and Bob Temple, the crew chief, thinks that that's a good sign. Earlier, they were loose, tight in traffic. If he can just get around and get up to Mike Wallace and everybody else, he might have a shot. And that's Joe Nemechek down there with the problem. And Mike Wallace just ran 31, 30, 80. That's as good a lap as I've seen about all day. As a matter of fact, the best lap he ran all day was 37. <laughs> He's motivated. He is motivated right now because the checkered flag is in the air. How about the uh, 87 car, Marty? Joe Nemechek? That would be an engine failure, Allen, done for the day. They uh, struggled once the caution came out, kind of put them a lap down. So uh, engine failure will end Joe Nemechek's afternoon as he heads to the garage. All right. So Nemechek is done. Another good lap by Mike Wallace. And the race for second is hot and heavy behind him while Mike Wallace has opened up a second and a third advantage. He just ran 30.75 on those worn times. <laughs> this is unbelievable. This is the race for second. The lap car is the 12 of Tim Fidoa, 44 Justin Labonte, 22 Jason Keller, 55 Robbie Gordon, all racing for the spot. Bobby makes it three wide. And here come some of the guys that got tires on the last caution. 46 Ashton Lewis got two, 38 Casey Kane got four. And we may see another yellow flag. Yeah, oh, this one's over there. They're dodging. They're uh, trying their best to see. have a caution flag. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Ashton passed Robbie. Robbie passed Ashton, and Ashton passed him back. And Robbie ran out of patience about two laps ago by the looks of it, so. And here comes Casey Kane with those four tires. He's going to be moving to the fifth position, but maybe not. Robbie's going to hold him up enough, and Mike Walsh only got eight and a half laps. Jeff Burton in the nine also got tires on the last caution. And the last lap, Justin Labonte ran 30-77. As fast a lap as he's run all day long. So he's he really wants to win this thing. Mike Wallace last stopped with 70 laps to go. He's had enough caution flags, so fuel to the finish won't be a question. Justin Labonte is reeling Mike Wallace in right now. Yes, he is. He's less than a second behind him now. Now, if he can forget about Jason Keller, if Labonte can forget about Jason Keller, who's right behind him, and worry about catching Mike, he might be okay. And you know what? Second place would be a great day uh -huh. for Justin Labonte and that team. It'd be fantastic. Family team kind of resurrected after being dormant for a few years. Trying to uh, reestablish Justin's career, if you will. Well, I don't know what happened with uh, Justin in qualifying, but he was he was fast in practice. The car was good when they had loaded him. He was really good on all the sheets. I think in that Friday morning practice, he was third or fourth fastest. Yeah. And he's closing in on Mike Wallace while you watch Robbie Gordon try and continue to deal with the lap car of Tim Fito on the 12. There are the top two in the championship. Up in the box, the five of Kyle Busch and the eight of Martin Truex Jr. And that's for 13th place. A half second lead for Mike Wallace and five and a half laps to go. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's going to yeah. wow. work out pretty interesting. Yeah. Last lap by Justin Labonte, three-tenths of a second faster than Mike Wallace. We saw what happened when Greg Biffle got within a couple of car lengths and picked up that arrow push. Does Justin Labonte have enough experience? Is it going to be a factor for him? Well, you got Mike Wallace, who has a lot of experience, so he's going to know what to do to protect that. Look at this. Three wide. <laughs> David Green 
Jason Leffler, ninth and tenth places there. They bounced off each other coming off turn four, but everybody gathered it up, scattered around the lap traffic. Last time by Wallace's lead, one third of a second. And they better not look now, but Jason Keller's closing on to both of them as well in the 22. Coming down oh, to four here. Look left here. to go. <laughs> well, Bonnie is coming. Talk about a hungry young man. His best ever NASCAR Bush Series finish, a 14th place back in July of 1999. Justin Labonte looking for the lead on Mike Wallace, who's trying to make it two wins in a row after his upset victory at Daytona a week ago yesterday. All right, now he's got there, VP, like we talked about. He's gotten to the bumper. Now we've got to see if he's got anything to make the pass. Is an arrow push going to be a factor? It wasn't that lap. In the meantime, like you said, and, and, and Hornaday's been bouncing off that turn four wall there for the last couple laps. Looks like he did it again. Yeah, I, I, he was up there about three laps ago. He was in eighth place. It's cost him three positions on that lap. Two and a half laps. And here comes Keller, like you said. Hey, Justin's going to have to get wonder creative. If wonder if he's stalled out there. Two laps to go. Looking, he's trying to, trying to figure it out. Like I said, he... Traffic's going to come into play. Yes, it is. Mike Wallace with the veteran experience. Justin Labonte with what appears to be a faster race car. Can he find a way around in the final lap and a half? I think he's going to have to get right up on that bumper and try hard. to get him loose, get him off the corner. Because Mike is really getting into the corners very well. But it looks like Justin's got some steam coming off. He needs to get him loose getting off the corner. And the white flag is up, and it's the final lap. Here's oh, Chicago oh, to the outside. Look at that. Oh, Mike Wallace, is he out of fuel? He's out of gasoline. You don't want to lead laps. this race. You just don't want to lead, is right. 70 laps was a bit too much to ask. Wallace is out of fuel. It's Justin Labonte and Jason Keller with a half a lap to go. Matt, is he out of gas? Out of gas. Yes. Man, oh, man. What a great drive right here. Off of turn number four for his first NASCAR Bush Series win. Say hello to Justin Labonte as he wins the Twister 300 at Chicagoland. Wow. I like to think about his grandpa Bob back in High Point, huh? Yeah. Is he happy today or what? I'll bet. All right, Matt, go ahead. Brian Frazier, you've worked with so many talented people. What does it mean to you to get this young guy's first win? Oh, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, we've worked we've worked hard, long hours trying to get you know this program up and going uh, with the Coast Guard support and and, and Dodge and, and everything. I mean, Jess has done a great job. I mean, I just want to thank the good Lord and, and all these guys that work so hard every week and and Terry and Kim Labonte and, and everybody. I mean, it's just it's awesome. It's just an awesome feeling right now. But what were you thinking those final two laps? I was praying a lot. <laughs> you remember this scene hey. when his dad won the Southern 500 last fall and stopped under the flag stand and they gave him the flag for the victory lap? That's, that's what the, Justin's doing. That's what Justin's going to do. Yeah. Take a lap around with a checkered flag like his dad did in Darlington. Out of boy. There you go. Well, he was there. Took advantage of opportunity. He was pressing Mike Wallace, and when Mike ran out of fuel at the white flag, he had enough to hold off Jason Keller for the win. Here comes Mike off turn four. White flag is there. It's waving. And he runs out of fuel. Wallace, you don't want to lead, huh? Man, I'm telling you. What a strange day. Well, he made it close to getting two wins in a row. Came up a little short today. Mike Wallace. Marty. Mike, as he crawls out of the car, so, so close. Did you know that the, you were that close on fuel? No, they didn't say anything to me about fuel. We, uh, we just gambled on staying out, which seemed to be the move. You know, Justin Labonte, I'd like to congratulate him on his first win. It's pretty cool for him. Uh, disappointing for us. We stayed out on tires. We got clean air. The car ran good. It was looks like we were going to win our second race in a row. And uh, start finish line just ran out of gas. So close to two in a row, and you can just hear the disappointment in his voice. Mike Wallace finishing 15th today in the final rundown, while Justin Labonte becomes the fourth first-time NASCAR Bush Series winner in 2004. We'll hear from him when we come back to Chicagoland. There he is, 23-year-old 
Justin Labonte. Your new first time winner in the NASCAR Bush Series. And Justin, take us through those final laps, especially when Mike stalled in front of you out of fuel. Well, I didn't know what really happened. We, uh, I thought we might have a shot at him on the last lap, but uh, he had a really strong car. And uh, I just, we hung in there all day. We were lapped down, came back, made up two laps. And, uh, you know, we were in contention at the end, and that's, what you, that's where you got to be if you're going to win races, and uh, it paid off for us today. You heard another driver comment on your motor as it being very stout. <laughs> yeah, our motors are really good, and uh, Freddie Terza in the motor shop, they uh, put a lot of effort into our motors, and uh, my dad told me before the race, he told me, uh, he said, now don't make too many changes because it usually shoots you in the foot. So uh, I listened to him today, and it, and it worked out. So. Uh, <laughs> and just to remind you, where uh, he comes from good stock here, two-time Cup champion Terry Labonte, what do you think of your son with his first Bush Series victory? I don't know what to say. I'm, it's awesome. I, I can't believe it. Uh, I knew he could do it, you know, and it was up to us to, to, to get him a, a good car. And uh, these guys did a great job and had a great motor, and everybody did a good job in the chassis. And uh, I, I, st I still, I'm going to wait. I hope I wake up tomorrow and still see that trophy. So it's exciting. Dumbfounded with all his wins, but happy for his son, Justin Labonte, your winner here today, Alan. All right. Another wild finish in the NASCAR Bush Series today, and we check the finishing order. From today's Twister 300, Justin Labonte with his first NASCAR Bush Series win in his 31st start and the fourth first-time winner in Bush Series racing this year. And J.J. Yelly only able to pick up two positions in the last few laps. See, Mike Wallace ended up 15th after running out of fuel, leading at the white flag. Matt Kenseth, after two flat tires, came back to finish 16th, last on the lead lap. And Kyle Busch, Mark Truex, 12th and 14th. Todd Bodine pulled off uh, late down pit road for um, looked like a splash of fuel. He finished in 24th position. Jamie McMurray off the pace. At the end of the race, Joe Nemechek fell out late. You see Greg Biffle ended up 15 laps down in 32nd after he also challenged for the win during this race. That was the story of the day. Guys up front having problems and others being able to take advantage of the opportunity.